Okay, guys, I have a lot to share today. I'll try to get it all in here, but I've been real busy. You can see by this diagram, I've been trying everything under the sun here. And it all triggered um, from uh, my last video and that ship right there. And I mispronounced the name. And I'm very sorry to uh, the man who invented that. I believe it's pronounced Pelte or Pelter, Pelte, Peltier. I, I call it Felter, which was very wrong, and I apologize to everybody for the mispronunciation. Next time I'll just point to that thing and go, it's a, it's a, a heat pump type chip. <laughs> anyway, I tried to make it work underneath the ignition coil, pick up induction with a sponge and a heat sink and all that. Kind of worked, but not like I liked it. But I tried a whole bunch of other stuff. I ran a, a two transistor, um, what I called the uh, table candle circuit to make the CFL run and then tried to make it run a JT, a uh, Jewel Thief, uh, with bleed off uh, different places on the circuit. And worked and worked and worked and finally came up with a way to do it. And there's the Jewel Thief uh, and it's a capacitor run thing. This, that's a super cap right there. There's no battery in this at all. And um, in the original redo of the circuit you can see I've eliminated the batteries altogether. And this is a Jewel Thief uh, super cap circuit that I came up with. It's running off of a 5 farad, a 2.5 volt super cap, and it'll run uh, most of the night on that one uh, super cap. And you can see there's nothing else in it. But the super caps bleed down on their own, so you'd have to have like a docking station or charge it uh, when it started to, to run down. But I, I moved it to a uh, 2.5 volt uh, 10 farad for this experiment. And uh, that was the 5 farad right there, but uh, I wanted everything clean here. And you can notice I'm using a different kind of coil. This coil here came out of a VCR, and uh, it works great. It's a one-to-one -one inductor, and uh, they sell them in the catalogs. They're a couple bucks that we don't have to make your own. And it fit in this experimenter board, which I really liked. And that's the little 2 and 222, and then, of course, the LEDs. And how I'm driving this is I'm bleeding off voltage from the CFL circuit. There's the CFL circuit right there. You can see that's my table candle going right there. It's light right now so it doesn't look like it's even on, but uh, that's on. It doesn't put out a lot of light, but I'm bleeding off uh, energy from that circuit to the tune of about uh, 10 or 15 milliamps to keep this running. And then uh, if you unplug it, then it just runs on the energy in the super cap. And uh, there's the amp draw on the system right now. It's 40, 45 milliamps for the whole thing, and that's driving the CFL and the Jewel Thief. Now, if I unplug the Jewel Thief, and by the way, I found out just by using a potentiometer, I could dial down the amount of resistance I needed to keep that cap at about 2.5 or 3 volts. And then uh, I replaced the uh, potentiometer uh, with the correct resistors. It happens to be 550 ohms to make this work. Now I'm going to unplug the Jewel Thief here and you can see now I dropped down to about uh, 30 milliamps. That's what's running right now on the CFL circuit is 30 milliamps. I'll plug this back in and go back up to 40, 40, 50 milliamps on it. Now there's something else I did here and that's I picked up charging on the bulb, and I've done this before, but I've played a lot with it this time, but there's a wire wrapped on the bulb here, and it goes down here, and it goes into a bridge rectifier connected to the ground, into a capacitor, and I'm pulsing it with a neon, and that's voltage. It's over 100 volts that's coming in um, on the back side of this coil uh, with a pulse off the high voltage of the bulb. Now there's very little amperage in that, but it will fill up a capacitor, so there's another source of charging on this circuit, and all that's coming out of 40 to 50 milliamps on a 12 volt power source. And I ran this all night last night, and that battery didn't go down hardly at all. Um, real uh, efficient system, but what I was going for was the JT. I was trying to get the Jewel Thief so I could charge it up and then when I needed it, just disconnect it. So the way I had this set up, you just disconnect it from the the power. And now your Jewel Thief is independent. And of course, it's just like a flashlight. You walk around with it and do whatever you want to do with it. And that's running off that capacitor right there. This is a capacitor run LED device on uh, 
a little experimenter board and there's no batteries or anything in it and uh, that just runs on the capacitor. It runs a couple hours uh, with the uh, 50, uh, 50 farad it runs most of the night and of course as the voltage drops down those LEDs uh, get dimmer and dimmer but it, it runs a long long time so that's what I'm looking for is something that will run the JT and then of course uh, have a CFL at the same time now there's a drop down to 30 milliamps on this on the CFL circuit the bulb charging thing is still going off and I'm still holding 100, 100 volts on the back end of that. But anyway, this this thing here, uh, the, this JT circuit, um, this is phenomenal. I have an experiment running right now on two AA alkaline batteries that's gone well over a week, and they just keep charging themselves back up. And I I don't know why this particular circuit is so efficient, but extremely efficient way to make light and uh, I'm real impressed with the way this this is all working out I just gotta refine it and especially on this back end bulb charging figure out a way to make that go better but that was uh, that was my experimentation for the last few days and uh, we've been talking a lot about the coil and uh, the windings on the coil on the JT circuit I tried about four or five different coils different windings different cores whatever um, uh, not happy with any of them yet so I'm still gonna have to work on finding the correct coil for that and of course getting the power off of it too so that's the latest